Good afternoon, good morning, or good evening from wherever it is you're tuning in from. This is Property Focus. I'm Peter and Gigi, and welcome to yet another amazing episode. Now, in this episode, as you can already tell, we're going to be looking at stone and stone art and what you can do with it. You can clad your walls, you could do your floors, you could do your exteriors, you could do your interiors. That's what we're going to find out in today's episode. So buckle up, it's going to be as solid as a rock, and welcome to the show. And to kick us off, we're going to the factory to find out more about these stones. You've got your Galaxy Black, you've got your Butterscotch Travertine, and so much more. Even vanilla sounds like a delicacy. Let's go over to the factory and find out more from Kelvin. This is super nice. Guys, we're here at the factory and we want to look at stone. That's what we want to look at today. And joined with me, we have a nice gentleman to just tell us a little bit about that. Tell us your name. My name is Kelvin Mativo, the workshop manager. Thank you very much, good sir. So you deal with what? We deal with stones. Okay. We have uh, marble and granite. Okay. So we have uh, black marquina, we have uh, Z beige, we have uh, galaxy black, we have uh, travertine. Mm -hmm. Yes, travertine is in several, several classes. We have 20 mm travertine. We have uh, butterscotch, we have classic, mm -hmm. we have uh, vanilla, mm -hmm. yes. It sounds like a delicacy now. This travertine, I heard a lot about it. So you've got your vanilla, you've got your butterscotch. Is that what we have over here? Yes, this is classic. This is classic, Yes. travertine. Mm. So it's got a very nice feel, very rich in its texture and its appeal, yeah? Yes. So what then happens? You import these slabs from where? Well, most of them we bought from uh, India, Turkey, uh, China. Then when we received them, yes. for us, when we received them, we sold them. As you can see, we sold them. Then uh, ours is to fabricate them. We fabricate them, we send to showroom or sites. Okay. Yeah. When you say fabricate, Kelvin, so you cut them into size? We cut them into sizes. If, uh, for example, if we are making a window, we have to measure the window into sizes. So we cut them into sizes. Brilliant. Mm. Kevin, what do you like about working with stone? You know, working with stone is uh, very yeah. enjoyable. Yes, it, it's natural. Yes. We are working with natural things here. Yes. So it, it is very enjoyable when you are working with stones. Okay. Yeah. So you advise, instead of getting these ceramics and water view, stone is the way to go? Yeah, stone house is the way to come. That's come to the stone, stone because it's natural. Yes, no. So it can stay for years and years? For years and years. Kelvin, you're telling me if I buy one for my kitchen countertop or my toilets or my floors, it will last forever? Call us, we make it for you. It will last forever. Mm. 100 years, 50 years. That's very brilliant. Really, yeah. Wonderful. Yes. Mm. Any advice you'd like to give our viewers who are watching the show? Yes, the advice I can give uh, our viewers about stones. Stones are cheap, mm -hmm. it's very natural, and uh, it's very enjoyable to work with. Yeah. I like it. You know, it's very honest. You don't have to worry about spoiling it. It's very good. I understand you can do some things similar to stone, but not really stone, but still have the same effect. Yes. Give me an example of that. The example I can give you is like this one. This one is a fountain. We are made from uh, fiber, but it looks like a stone. As very you can nice. see, it is, looks like a stone. Very nice. Mm -hmm. mm. Very similar, different products. How, what about price-wise? Do they compare the same? No, the price is almost the same, eh? but you see the stone is uh, more, more, more expensive than the fiber. But the price is uh, almost the same. Close. Well, thank you very much. At least they achieve the same effect. They're both fountains. Mm. But working the same function, you can see. Wonderful. Yes. Well, Kelvin, mm. thank you very much for coming onto the show. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for staying with us. We're going to get into a short commercial break and then there on after we're going to see the different things you can make with travertine and stone, your kitchen counters, your stools, even fire pits. All this and more right after the commercial break. Stay tuned. Welcome from the commercial break and thanks for tuning in to Property Focus. Now, I met a very, very seasoned artisan, 
in the stone business and he's been doing this ever since way back we're going to have a chat with pankaj and he's going to tell us about stone art a little bit more let's go good 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 now welcome back joined with me we have somebody who's been in the stone business for eons in fact he even has his ancestors who started this business and we thought who else better to tell us about stone art than mr pankaj welcome to property focus thank you very much good good tell us about yourself my name is Pankaj and I started this business. I won't say I started the business. I would say I continued the business started by my ancestors. Well, I don't know it started in which uh, generation. I am not aware of that. Uh, uh, my forefathers were contractors and doing all sort of construction works. Well, my father was an architect. He started being an architect, he started the stone business. Okay. And then I continued for that. I got it to Africa, actually. I, that was in India, long back, what I remember when I was a child. Yes. But later, the same business, I took it to West Africa, in Cameroon. We worked in Cameroon, Congo, Benin, Togo, in that region, in West African region. Slowly, we had uh, no choice other than shifting to East Africa to look for a better prospect and a better market. So we came to East Africa and here I am in front of you. And here we are. Tell us about the design process of making these stones. The design process basically it started from the requirement of the country. I saw that people are only sticking to one stone that is Mazeras. Everything was coming from Mombasa. They were not even thinking about any other color. Uh, I literally found the color of Mazeras very good but very monotonous because it was on each and every building and the stone was falling off all the time. Then we thought of doing it in a better way, started bringing stones from India and uh, Italy, which was costing a lot because of duty and the transport. Then we started looking for some local material and we reached in some East African region where we found roughly 20 to 30 types of different quarries within the region, East African region. Okay. Uh, we applied for some licenses. It took us three to four years to get all the licenses before starting mining and buying from those quarries. We ended up putting some three factories around in the region, started manufacturing in those factories and the Kenya is a main market, so mm -hmm. started bringing the stuff in Kenya. Wonderful. So Kenya is a consumer market, I would say. So manufacturing is done in many areas, but Major Kenya is a place where we sell the most. So tell us about indoor and outdoor stones and even for flooring and walling. What are the different types? How do you know the different types? Uh, basically the floors are, most of the time what we use on the floors are more subtle and the flat surface stones. Of course they are supposed to be rough because they are not supposed to be very slippery. Yes. It's only marble which is uh, very smooth polish but even marble when we work on it we do not make it rough we do not make it uh, very smooth we don't make it very slippery because we don't use any of the additives on it mm -hmm. so marble itself is not slippery it is only slippery when you add wax on it and we don't use wax to polish the marble we use normal seven grits to make it shine and the marble can be used can you imagine it can be used in the showers also and it is not going to slip. People always have a question that how the, the five star or seven star hotel they visited last had marble and it was non-slip in the washroom. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is well possible. Mm -hmm. As long as you do it correctly, you do it in a right way, it will not be slippery. So basically the floors are there which can be used, the same stone could be used on the wall. But the stone of the wall cannot be used on the floor which is specially meant for the wall because they are pretty rough. So we manufacture according to the requirements so the same stone can be given a different texture as and when required. Yes, so what you have on the floor you can put on the wall but what you have on the wall you can't put on the floor. Uh, that can be used on the floor but you have to work a lot, give it a very um, subtle or uh, smooth finish to use it on the floor which is tedious. So, in a way, there are two different parts. Some could be used, some could not be used. Okay. So, tell us about cladding. What time do you clad? Do you do it in pre-construction, uh, at construction, post-construction? When do you do cladding? Most of the time, we do during the construction time. Okay. 
but it can be used post construction. Even in the house what you're living, you can still clad it. Mm -hmm. So on your wall, you can just put the clads? Any wall what you're using can be cladded. There are different glues that can be used to avoid the dust, to avoid damaging the existing walls. And uh, the stone can be fixed to the walls using special glues without hampering a lot in your house. Tell us about some of the trends in this space. Uh, well, when, when I listen to this word trend, the trend keeps changing. Every five years or so, a new trend is there in the market and then we see people are just, uh, the focus of the client is changing from oriental designing to the contemporary designing and then to the rustic designing. Someone goes to Masai Mara, comes back and wants a house like a cottage. Someone goes to um, Rome, comes back and wants a house in an oriental way. So that keeps changing. Every client has his own taste uh, and we cater all of them. For example, most of the claddings behind you are rustic finish and you can see the fountain which is behind me. It is rustic at the same time we have given some dolphin finish. So basically it's according to the requirement of the design given by the architect and the choice of the client. And we are capable of executing each and every design which is possible, which is uh, required in stone. Mm -hmm. What are some of the items you're making with uh, stones? Uh, a lot. I, you close your eye, you think of anything and I can make it. I can, like you're sitting there, I can copy your complete statue like this in stone. You, you must have seen in, uh, in town, there's a Kenyatta statue there. You must have seen in all the old buildings, there are politician statues, there are big people statues there. Everything is, even in this, this fire pit, what you see in front of you can, like you have seen, no one thought of it that we can make it in stone. We did it. The claddings behind you, the furniture, the garden furniture, the fountains, fireplaces, there's no limit to it. Yeah. Funny you mention about the molding. How do you do the molding? There are two options. What we do, the, when, when we do the moldings, there are two options. One, we make mold out of fiberglass and we cast fiberglass and then we coat it with stone coating. So it gives a feel of stone but at the same time it's lightweight that is the uh, major in these days because we are doing multi-story buildings and we can't give that much of weight to the building now when it comes to individual house and people are very choosy they want it handcrafted very specifically done according to their own shape requirement and detail and that time we take block of stone and we carve it we craft it the molding is crafted and we fix it in their house any advice to anybody who's watching you right now, who wants to get into the business, who wants to design their homes using stone, anything? It's a vast market. Even there will be 20 companies like us or 200 companies like us will not be able to uh, cater the requirement of East Africa. The market is very big. It's only that it is not being exploited well. There is availability of stone, there is availability of raw material, there is availability of skilled labor. Even the skilled labor is not available, you can train them very easily. Kenyans are very adaptive, they learn very quickly and I find it's, it's very, very comfortable working in East Africa, getting local people, training them. The business could be easily created, the business could be easily developed. This is in, in scope of making a new company or starting a business. At the same time, someone who is interested in decorating his house or living in high standards, not spending a lot, local stones are there. We can, you can, I would say, not we, you can easily uh, buy local stones, craft it and use it, which is very well possible. Wonderful, wonderful. Pankaj, thank you very much for coming onto the show. Thank you very much for calling me. Well, that's all we have for today, folks. We've learned so much about stone, what you could do with it. You could use the same material on the floor, on the wall, but you can't use what's on the wall, on the floor. I learned a lot. It's been a fantastic episode. You've been watching Property Focus. And remember, for more on everything building construction, architecture, and real estate, you know where to tune in. I've been your host, Peter Ngigi. Till next time, see you later. Have a lovely evening.